Good morning, good morning, good morning. For truly this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you know that God is good, God is awesome, wherever you are this morning, put your hands together and let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let us thank God for this day, for truly this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice in it. Let our feet stand at the gates of Jerusalem, for our God is good, not some of the time, but somebody ought to believe that he's good all the time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and worship him. Is there anybody out there this morning that know that God is good this morning? If you know that he's good, I dare you to put your hands together and give God a praise. Give him a praise this morning from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Amen. Again, we thank you. We thank you as we worship, as we worship virtually again this morning. For those who are visiting us this morning on our Facebook, those who are visiting us on our live stream, as well as our prayer line this morning, we thank God that you have decided to join us wherever you are or whatever device you are on this morning. We thank you so, so much for being a part of our worship service. As we continue to invite and invoke the presence of God, we ask you wherever you are to just give God the praise. For Jesus said that in these mountains we will no longer worship, for they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So wherever you are, if you're in the bathroom, if you're in the living room, if you're in a, between a cup of coffee, just understand stand invite the presence of God and watch him show up and show out on your behalf let us invite him right now eternal God we thank you so much for all that you have done and all that you're doing we thank you for this momentous moment to where we can put our minds on you we thank you father God that you have given us the opportunity to worship you again even though, God, we are separated, we are still together. We are binded together by the spirit of love and the spirit of peace and the spirit of truth. So now we invite you, Holy Spirit, to have thine own way. We ask that you bless us in a mighty way, that you will bless the preached word. Lord, bless the singing and the preaching and everyone who participates in the act and the art of worship. Now, Lord, as we say right now, as we turn this worship over to you, we say today, now may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable unto thine sight. Oh, Lord, we thank you right now for being our strength and we thank you for being our redeemer. It's in the mighty, marvelous name of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, we do pray. If you believe me, just give God a hand clap of praise. Now let us worship God. Boy, hallelujah. We're so excited to be here this morning to worship and praise, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. How many are excited about being in the house of the Lord? Oh, clap your hands. Everybody stomp your feet.
with all of your heart. know that God is good. Hallelujah. He's been better than good to me. Hallelujah. He's opened so many doors. Hallelujah. Made so many ways. For that, I just say thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, you 
And that's never been so more evident than right now. We are faced with so much this year. We have been faced with so much this year. But through it all, God has kept us. God has been healing us, restoring us, transforming us. And so we just have to remember that when we start to feel the weight of everything that's going on around us, that he's good, that he's merciful, that he's loving and kind. We can't forget that. So when it gets to be just too much, we give it to him. We don't carry it. We give it to him. Why? Because he is our strength. He's our strong tower. He is our everything. And so a lot of us have been dealing with so much this week. But God is true. He doesn't change. He just needs you to trust in him, to lean on him, to believe in him, to follow and obey him. He is the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the redeemer. So we give him glory today because he's just that good. Just that good. We thank you, Lord. Our scripture this morning will be found in 1 John, the second chapter. We'll be reading from the NIV version, starting at the third verse and going through the 11th. It reads, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you as a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. God's word for God's people. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you, Lord, just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for being our strength, for being our God, for just allowing your glory to rest upon us, for breathing life into us on day today and giving us new grace and new mercy. We thank you, Father God. We can't thank you enough, Father God, because you are so good to us. Father God, we just ask that if there be anything, Father God, that is within us that is not like you, that you would remove it, Father God. We ask that you forgive us for our sins, Father God, because we want to strive to be more and more like you each and every day. So this day is another day for us to get it right another day for our light to shine, another day for us to show love to our brothers and sisters, even those who don't look like us. 
even those who don't think like us, even those who don't live like us. Father God, we just thank you and we honor you. We ask for your healing power, Father God, to come across this land, Father God. Heal those who are sick, Father God, sick in their bodies, sick in their minds. Finances are sick, Father God, heal them. Father God, we ask that you deliver us. Deliver us from evil, Father God. Deliver us out of trouble, Father God. Deliver us from negative thoughts, Father God. We just ask right now for you to just put your loving arms around us. To whisper in our ears and tell us that you love us, Father God. No matter what, you love us. And you just want us to just have a relationship with you, Father God, to come to you for everything. So, Father God, we declare that we are your children, that we are going to live each day striving to be like you, that we are going to thrive, not just merely survive, that we are going to overcome, that we're going to keep pressing, Father God. That we're going to keep pushing, Father God. That we're going to keep believing in you, Father God. We just love and adore you. And Father God, we ask that you hear the prayers of your people, Father God. That you answer those prayers. We pray right now for the servant who will come and deliver the word on today. We ask, Father God, that we have a heart to receive it, Father God. That we have a heart to, you know, just put it into practice. We ask that you allow the speaker to come with boldness, Father God. Not to sugarcoat anything for us, Father God, but just to speak whatever it is that you've laid upon their heart. We believe it and we receive it. We ask all these things in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. say thank you enough God 
My, 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 my God. Good morning, everybody. Those who are here in the brick and mortar, those who are visiting us through our various mediums, we thank you so much for choosing this place to worship. Those who will catch the replay, those who just want to come back a year from now when they see it on their memories and say, I think I just want to see that worship experience one more time. We thank you and we welcome you into this place. We got a couple of things we want to bring before you. The first thing goes is on next Saturday, October the 24th, between 10 and 12. Somebody put it in their phones, between 10 and 12. We will celebrate Passionate for Pink. It is our Divine and God Ministries way of recognizing those who have struggled, fought, and lost that thing we call breast cancer. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we do thank you between 10 and 12. Please come by and let us see your face. Um, we have several mediums of study. We have um, Thursday night, we have Wednesday night, and we have Sunday night. We are in the book of Nehemiah. Oh, my God. That thing is full of power, instructions, retool, restore, and revival. Oh, come and join us at one of our studies. Um, we are still scattered, but we're still together. Amen. What we're going to do and how we're going to do it is not up to us. We're waiting on God to tell pastor so pastor can tell us. So the question of when are we coming back? I don't know. But it's been good to worship and see everybody still being here together on one accord. Amen. Um, what's going on today is something. Um, do you know what today is? It's his anniversary. 20 years in this place we call Papa's Free Missionary Baptist Church. 20 years leading some of the most hard-headed, opinionated, God-fearing, loving people. I tell you, it's a whole lot of things I would like to be in my life, but pastor is not one of them. But the scripture says this so clearly. I love it. And we've heard it five million times, but it, it resonates. It resonates. It says, Paul wrote in the book of Romans, he said, how then can we call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? heard? Or how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they have been sent? 20 years ago, pastor was sent here. Well, I'm sorry, 24 years ago, pastor was sent here as our, as our youth pastor. And that was his first assignment here. He had um, a little bit more hair. He was in his 20s. Um, he moved faster. He had <laughs> a little bit more patience. Now, maybe not as much patience, but he was full of zeal. But then the assignment came to him that he didn't know he was sent for, and many don't know he ran from that scent. That scent, he wouldn't return to sender. But how many of us know that when God calls you to something, you can run, but you cannot hide? And he took that assignment here. And when he came to this church, we had a pastor, and I was, I was a pre-freemanizer. Uh, pre um, but we had a pastor that had been here for over 40 years, 44 years, I believe. So it was a stronghold in the community. And here comes this 32, 33-year-old man saying, I'm going to lead these people. And was it perfect? It was perfect in God. And we pushed through a lot of stuff, and we worked through a lot of stuff, and we cried through a lot of stuff. We lost a couple things. We gained a lot of things. But most of all, here under his tutelage, we have had God's favor. And most of all, we've had God's favor because you stayed on the wall. It is appropriate that we are in Nehemiah right now as we are retooling and restoring, but we are also reminded that we have to stay on the wall, and we thank you, Pastor, that for every tear that you have cried for us, for every word we've said that hurt your feelings, for every time we were disobedient to what you have asked us to do because God told you to tell us to do it, we apologize, and I'm weeing a lot of people. I'm weeing a lot of people, and we love you, and we thank you so much for it. So as we continue this month where we celebrate Pastor Freeman on yesterday, we had a parade. Well, it was kind of a parade. He stopped every car and talked for over five minutes. So um, 
it was a it was a drop in through our by. But it was fun, and if you know him, he likes to fellowship. And he, first lady stood there and said, there's no social distancing about this man right now. He's leaning in folks' car, how you doing? But if you know him, you love him, and you know that's what he does. But we started off with that on yesterday. We had many people who dropped by love offerings for Pastor Freeman. We asked you to, to continue to do so. Yesterday was just the beginning of it. If you still would like to sow into his anniversary ministry or his anniversary uh, love offering, please feel free to do so. If you send it here to the church, make sure you notate it on your check. If you use our electronic forms of giving, please notate it in your memos, and we will make sure the pastor get it. He's deserving no matter what we do on today. No matter what we give him, we can't beat God's giving, and we cannot pay him enough for what he has done for us in this place. So again, Pastor Freeman, to Loretta Freeman, who has to stand home and listen to him rant and rave about us, who prays harder. If y'all don't know Loretta Freeman's power of prayer, you better ask somebody. She will war for you on bending knee to Zedrick, who, who allows him to be shared with us every single day. We thank you. We love you. And to Mama Freeman, without her, there would be no him. And we thank you so much for Mama Freeman and Tasha and Van and the rest of the family. So today, and we will continue for this month, we will emphasize celebrating you, but we will always love and respect you every day. We thank you so much. And as we always say, our purpose that was actually authored by Pastor Freeman when he got here. And we say it every single Sunday. And let us recite it together. Ontario, we assemble ourselves prayerfully with thanksgiving and praise, teaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ until he comes. We are a people who has been brought together by the blood of Christ. And nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leaves me beside the quiet stream. And he helps me do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. Be 
If you know you are safe in his arm, come on and give God a hand clap of praise. That's why I'm saying. That's why I'm watching me on live stream, hashtag there is a word. Glory to God. Yes, God. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to read from a different translation. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. The Passion. There's a reason why I want to read from the Passion. 
Because Jesus is passion with us. Glory to God. I want you to go to John the ninth chapter. John the ninth chapter. John the ninth chapter. I just heard promoted in the pandemic. Y'all better claim that. Mm, golly. Promoted in the pandemic. Glory to God. I just heard that. <sighs> Y'all don't, don't mess with me, Alan. I got sure for oh, she got. Here we go. It says John the ninth chapter, the verses one through eleven. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Afterward, Jesus walked down the street. He noticed a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, "Teacher, who sin caused this guy's blindness? His own or the sin of his parents?" Jesus answered, "Neither." It happened to him so that you could watch him experience God's miracle. While I am with you, it is daytime, and we must do the works of God who sent me while the light shines. For there is coming a dark night when no one will be able to work. As long as I am with you, my life is the light that pierces the world's darkness. Glory to God. Then Jesus spat on the ground, some version says spit, made some clay with his saliva. Then he anointed the blind man's eyes with the clay. And he said to the blind man, now go and wash the clay from your eyes in the ritual pool of Siloam. Somebody need a healing right now. So he went and washed his face and he came back. He could see for the first time in his life. This caused quite a stir among the people of the neighborhood. For they noticed the blind beggar was now seeing. They began to say to one another, Isn't this the blind man who once sat and begged? Some said, No, it can't be him. Others said, But it looks just like him. It has to be him. All the while, the man kept insisting, I'm the man who's, who was blind. Finally, they asked him, what happened to you? Verse 11, he replied, I met the man named Jesus. He rubbed clay on my eyes and said, go to the pool named Salon and wash. So I went, and while I was washing the clay from my eyes, I began to see for the very first time ever. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come before you right now, Lord God. God, your Shekana is already in this place. Now, Lord, I ask you to remove Edwina right now, God. God, and put your servant right here, Lord God. Have your way. Let the words in the mouth of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. My title today, Jesus did it, period, with a T on it. Y'all didn't catch that. Jesus did it, period, with a T on it. Period is an interjection used to single the end of a discussion or to emphasize a point. That there is nothing else to be said or debated. Jesus did it, period. Their conversation is over. There's no more discussion. I don't want to talk about it. Jesus did it, period. Let me give you some examples. I'm not loaning you any more money, period. Lord have mercy. I'm not going to tell you to clean your room again, period. Don't ask to borrow my car, period. I am blessed, period. I am healed, period. I am the head and not the tail, period. God is my strength, period. Lord have mercy, y'all get the point. Well, here we know that in the previous chapter, John the 8th 
chapter, we read about Jesus at the Feast of the Tabernacles, the most popular feast in all of Israel. You will recall at the feast, Jesus taught in the temple and he was confronted by Jewish teachers who wanted him to explain who he was. He also escaped the legalistic trap of the woman caught in adultery. Now, here we are in John 9. John 9 tells a long story, detailed story, of about one of those true children, how he came to be a disciple of Christ. We've seen that John's gospel contains a number of personal one-on-one -on -one encounters with Jesus. In this particular chapter, we meet a man who was born blind. He had never seen the beauty of God's creation or the faces of his loved ones. When Jesus arrived on the scene, everything changed. Let's look at the text. Let's look at verses 1 and 2. Watch this. Now, he, Jesus was walking down the street. He noticed this blind man. And here the disciples says, Watch this, y'all. This is how nosy folks are. Who sin caused this guy's blindness? His own or the sin of his parents? Watch this. When we look at our lives, there are two components that stands out. What people see from us and what people perceive from us. Lord have mercy. Y'all didn't catch that. What people see from us and what people perceive of us. The unfortunate thing is that what people see from us and what people perceive from us is the own, is only part of the story. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to help somebody in here. What people see from us is only what we show them. Mm. Watch this. What people perceive of us can be skewed based on their agenda. Good God from Zion. <sighs> the what people see from us can only be something they see from the way we behave, the things we tell, and the additional things we do. The what people perceive of us is solely their perception of what they can see from us. Lord have mercy. But because they don't know the whole story, the message often get twisted. Good God from Zion. Have y'all ever had somebody to twist, twist the story because of what they thought they saw? Yeah. Watch this. And the reason why the story is twisted is because of the blindness that they don't know the whole story. Mm. Watch this. The disciples had the audacity to say, whose sin caused this guy's blindness? His own or his, the sin of his parents? Watch this. See, let me watch this. Let's go here. Oftentimes, people can see you talk to somebody and are immediately accuse you of going with them. Okay. Did the people in the balcony hear me? Watch this. People can see you doing something and may not be what they eyes saw and would accuse you and make a wrong accusation. Oftentimes, that's how innocent people, uh, uh, character is torn up. That's how people's integrity is torn up. Because guess what? You don't know the whole story. Oh, my. That's why I tell people, you better be careful what you see on Facebook. I mean, Facebook. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Jesus. Watch this. It says, a common belief in Jewish culture was the calamity or suffering was the great result of a sin. Y'all, it's amazing how this culture assumed that because this man was blind, somebody had sin. Just because I'm sick or just because something wrong with me don't mean I'm sin. It's probably because I ate too many Oreos. Oh, God. I'm 
trying to help y'all. Watch this. Then in Jesus 3, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Because Jesus checked them. Watch this. Jesus said, neither. It happened to him so that you could watch him experience God's miracle. Let me stop right there. Y'all, stop thinking that everything bad in your life is to destroy you. Sometimes God sent a storm to clear the path. Golly. Sometimes God have to send a storm to clear that foolishness out your way. Oh. Sometimes God has to send the storm to get your attention that you need to disconnect from some folks. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Jesus checked the disciples. And watch this. See, sometimes we need to check people when they immediately assume, oh, what you did wrong. How you did that. You lost your car. You must not have been paying your bill. Well, you don't know. I might have been trying to pay a hospital bill so I can stay alive. Oh, have mercy. Basically, in verse 3, Jesus said, mind your business. I need a t-shirt with that. I need a t-shirt with that. Mind your business. My granddaddy used to say, if you ain't bring no grocery sack in here, you can't tell me what to do. Whew. Watch this. Then verse 4, watch this. He says, as the light of the world, I come. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, for y'all to get this text. Jesus is the light. I don't care what darkness you're going in your life. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care if the cat is barking, the dog is meowing, the children acting a fool. All you got to do is call on a man named Jesus. Glory to God. Verse 5, 4 and 5, he tells them, I'm the light. Watch this. He tell him, you don't have long. As long as I am, you better grab these miracles. Glory to God. Watch this. Here we go. Then Jesus spat on the ground and made some clay with his saliva. Then he anointed the blind man's eye with the clay. Y'all didn't get this. Watch this. Jesus spit in the dirt. Watch this. Bible scholars, go read Genesis 2 and 7. We came from dirt. The very thing we came from, he using to heal it. Oh, Y'all didn't catch that. Watch this. He made mud from it. He put it on the man's eyes. Glory to God. Watch this. Thus the word of God spit from Jesus' mouth. It's mixed with humanity, provided the basis for the miracle. Let me say that again. Thus the word of God Mixed with the spit mm -hmm, and mixed with a little humanity, the dirt from which man was created provided the basis for the miracle. Lord, have mercy. Basically, Jesus is telling you, quit saying the doctor cured you because the doctor treated you, but God killed you. My, my, my. That's all he's saying. He's saying, look. Them doctors can treat you, but I can cure you. Glory be to God. Now watch this. Verse 7. Then he tells the man to wash. Now see, y'all might put me out on this verse. Watch here. He tells the man to wash. His healing required an act of faith. Jesus gave the man something to do, and the man did it. When, he, when his face was washed, he could see for the first time in his life. Lord, have mercy. Watch this. Y'all, the man didn't say why. Oh, God. Thank you. He just did it. I'm going to say that again. The man didn't say why. He just went and what? Did it. See, some of us too busy asking God, well, why I got to do it that way? Oh, Jesus. Watch this. He did not try to analyze it. Let me stop here. Some of y'all miss your blessing because you're too busy analyzing it. Don't you know analysis is paralysis? Glory to God. I'm going to hit this last one. Watch this because I'm about to go home. The next thing, he did not procrastinate. Good God from Zion. Oh, Lord. See, some of us got a spirit of procrastination because God don't tell us to do it our way. Well, I'm going to wait a little.
you are dead. You are lying on prayer. Watch this. You say, well, let me pray one more time. Why you need to pray when God giving you the instruction? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't have to pray five times, turn around three times, and jump seven times to know when God said move, move. Whew, glory to God. He just did it. He obeyed God. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go to verses 8 and 11. Watch this. Then, watch this. Y'all, y'all, I'm trying to help y'all because I want to walk this text. Then, verse 8. It's this caused quite a stir among the people in the neighborhood. For they noticed the blind beggar was now seen. Uh-huh. Watch this. It, the, they began to say to one another, isn't this the blind man who once sat in bed? Someone said, no, it can't be him. Others said, but it looks just like him. It has to be him. All the while, the man kept insisting, I am the man who was blind. Watch this, y'all. See, you got to watch folks that always worry about why you blessed, how you got blessed, how you afford this, how your children going here, how your children got there. If they not putting money in your pocket, you need to just tell them, Jesus did it, period. Glory to God. I am tired of people worrying about what other folks have. Mind your own business. Worry about your own blessings. Deal what's going on in your household. Worry about what's going on in your job. Get out of my business. Because guess what? I serve a man, Lord have mercy, that came from Galilee. Good God. This man can bless you, and this man can bless me. But let me tell you a story. There's a man I want to talk about today. There's a man that whose daddy was from Romaria, South Carolina. His mama was from Greenville, South Carolina. He's a graduate of Malden High School. Glory to God. He graduated from the class of 1985. Good God from Zion. He spent most of his summers in the country, a part of Newberry. Glory to God. He spent his time fishing and hunting. Oh, my, my, my. He spent his time bailing hay and feeding the cows. Glory to God. And then watch this. As years passed, he realized there was a calling on his life. Good God from Zion. So he said, let me answer this call. He was licensed on October the 6th in 1991 at the age of 24. Good God from Zion. He was elected pastor of Papa Spring Missionary Baptist Church on April the 8th, on October the 18th, 2000. Uh, pastor, do you know who that is? My, my, my. Watch this. See, Pastor, I got to tell you something right here. When I was studying this, and y'all need to catch this too, we're in the month of October. Oh, God, y'all didn't say nothing. We're in the month of October. Do y'all realize the number 10 means testimony? Right. The number 10 means testimony. Oh, y'all supposed to say, God, help me watch this. There is an open door. You better grab your blessing. We got 12 more days in the month of October. You better get up and tell God what you need. God said the number 10 means testimony. So let me finish telling you about this testimony. Watch this. Oh, God. I feel my help coming on. Who glory to God. The story doesn't end there. He received an honorary doctorate in 2011. He received an iron doctorate in 2014. So when people ask you, you need to say, Jesus did it, period. Oh, glory to God. When people ask you, how did you get here? Jesus did it, period. Lord, have mercy. When Jesus asks you, why is your daughter at Alabama State? You say, Jesus did it, period. Oh, glory. When people ask you, why you seem like that? You tell them, Jesus did it, period. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. Oh, God. See, watch this. When 
people had to when they said, Helen, how you doing all this? How you can do all this? You need to tell them Jesus did it, period. Glory to God. When people said, how you walking so quick? You had surgery. You need to say, Jesus did it, period. I need you to stand on your feet. I need you to declare that Jesus did it, did it, did it.
your blessings. I heard God say, some of y'all constantly defending what God has done for you. He said, stop. He did it, period. Glory to God. Let us pray. God, forgive us when we defend what you have done. When all we need to say is Jesus did it, period, and leave it there. God, we thank you. And God, we claiming Jesus did it even before you do it. We putting it in the atmosphere. God, this is the month of October, the 10th month, the month of testimony. So, Father, right now, we just give you glory and honor. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you what you've done, and we thank you what you're going to do. God, we have 73 more days in this year. And God, you still can do it. So, Father, we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And as the praise team sings, there may be one
Hey, kick your ass, it's online. If you would just, if you would like to come by ladder, baptism, or Christian experience, someone on the live stream will get your name. the word. If you don't mind, give me some hearts and some thumbs and those that are in the audience, clap your hands. Amen. Amen. I thank you for the uh, 20 year celebration here. God bless you all. All who work tirelessly and, and those who work so diligently in ministry here. We thank each and every one of you from the tall to the small to the wide to the thin. We all in, amen, and we thank God for you. We, we thank God for you so much. Again, I'm on, I think someone put on, the, um, on our live, but if you really want to be a blessing, uh, again, we have our, our Passionate About Pink, and uh, if, you would go, if you would go dollar sign, Divine in God Ministry, and uh, let us bless that ministry that we may bless our community. Amen? Amen. So, I thank each and every one of you guys for coming. Thank you for yesterday. This is one uh, anniversary I will always remember. I remember them all, but this one right here was different. And uh, my friends were uh, calling me, and I'm on. we're going to go. They were calling me, and they're like, man, y'all really celebrated your anniversary. I said, man, I told y'all. Y'all going around and y'all drinking from the rock and y'all drinking from the mountain. I said, but when you're thirsty, you got to come to the spring. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all. Reverend, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, just to let you know, let us continue to be in prayer because prayerfully, knowingly, not hoping, but by faith, next year I will be robing her as Dr. Edwina Perry. Amen. So, uh, let her finish on up. God bless you. I hope you don't lose your hair like I lost mine, but you're going to be all right. Amen. So with all that being said, may the God that loves me be the same God that loves you and teach us how to love one another. It's in his precious name who bled, died, but rose on a third day morning with all power in his hand. And his resurrection is sure, just as sunrise and sunsets, and we will meet him in the air. And who wants to be ready to hear those words when we walk through the celestial city, when he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up, and I make you ruler over many. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless us all. And shalom to each and every one of you. Have a great one. Bye-bye.